Hey guys, welcome back to Grace Kids. We're so excited to have you here today. We are on week four of Advent, week three of our exciting Wait For It um, series all about, we're looking at, you know, board games. Maybe you've played a few board games with your family um, over this time. And we're talking about Advent today. Really quick question. Do you know how many days are left till Christmas? You can count it on one hand. There are five days left. Super exciting, super cool. So we've been talking about Advent for so long now. Do you remember what Advent means? It means the arrival, the coming of Jesus. You were so smart, I know you got it. So we're celebrating Jesus and the fact that God brought his son to the world and he was born as a little baby. Now the fourth and last purple candle is known as the angel's candle. So this one symbolizes love. Now I invite you guys to come and hang out with us um, when we are at, oh, what is it called? Christmas Eve service. <laughs> That's also in line and we'll be looking at the Christ candle. So that'll be really cool. So this is the fourth one and it symbolizes love. God loves us so much that he sent his one and only son, Jesus, that we can have a relationship with him. How cool is that? So in Luke 2, it says this, suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with with the angel praising God and saying glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests and also John 3 16 maybe you know this one for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life so maybe you've helped your parents with the morning the the lighting of the candles again um again I need your help uh, today's just been a little wild. I have been trying to find, um, I don't know where I put it. Can you see it? Can, can you see this? It says joy. It's purple. It's a star. Um, it needs to complete our thing. Can, have you found it? Cause I literally can't find it. I've looked everywhere. I've looked literally everywhere for it. Have you seen it? My back feels kind of weird. What? Who put this here? What? Oh my goodness, how did that happen? Did you see this? Because I did not see it. Okay, the love, the love candle. We are putting it on our advent tree. Beautiful, oh my goodness. And then, oh goodbye, come back, joy. There we go, perfect, beautiful, exciting. Okay, I'll put that up later. We are gonna go into our lesson and learn more about things today. But again, come hang out with us um, if you haven't already sent a letter to a senior in our our um, our congregation. Feel free to check out our website. We also have our Christmas party, and that's going to be really exciting. So check all that out, and we will um, catch you guys after our lesson. Okay, let's go. All right, welcome. It's Emma and Pastor Shay here, again, living our best lives. Today we have a little activity we're going to do. It is called the Impossible Shot. Um, maybe you have seen. What are their names on YouTube? Is there these guys who do impossible shots all the time? I forget their name. They're really cool. I'm sure you know who they are. Um, anyways, they do this all the time, but today we are talking about how God can do the impossible, which is really cool. So we decided, um, Emma told me that she tried out for, or did you try out, were you on the basketball team? I was. She was on the basketball team. I was team. not very good. Well, we're just gonna, we're gonna put that to the test. I think you're really good. So we're gonna play the impossible shot. So what's gonna happen? It's, I'm going to move this around rapidly, and she is going to try and make the impossible shot. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Three, two, one. Oh. Oh, try again, try again. Oh no, it's hurting. It's just me holding this. Oh, oh. That's okay, okay. I think we're good, we're good. That was the impossible shot. Maybe you have one of these bad boys at home. Oh, she made it. It's not impossible anywhere. Maybe you have one of these bad boys at home and you want to play this with your brother, sister, mother, father, grandparent, something cool like that. Um, you totally can. It's really fun. You can try and do the impossible. Now, I think you have a question for us. I think I do. I think um, you do. Something about being impossible. Not being impossible. Something about the impossible. Go. If you had the ability to have an incredible superpower or skill to do something impossible, what would it be and why? Okay, can you think about this? Do you know this already? What would I do? Um, maybe like, I would kind of like to teleport. Then if I'm running late, I can just go. 
Like, yeah. Or if I'm like, I forgot I have to be there. <laughs> You're there super fast. Mm -hmm. You want to go on a vacation with your family? So quick. So quick. Yeah. This morning I forgot my keys at home. Home. Back. Wow. So quick. How about you? Do you have something that you would, an impossible superpower? I might like to fly. I think that would be really cool. That would be really cool. You could rescue kittens. Totally. Every every tree would be kitten free. Exactly. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Well, maybe you shouted out your answer, or maybe you can share it with your fam. Do it up. Okay. We also have our scripture because we're getting into our Bible story. We love a Bible story. All right. We're looking at Luke one. If you have your Bibles, will you whoop them open with us? Um, not whoop them. Do it gently. You don't want to hurt your Bible. So we had talked about last week, we did a little Pictionary game. And um, Austin and Emma really brought out their artistes and it was very beautiful. And there was some pictures. Do you remember who the people were? Oh, who's that? <laughs> this is baby Jesus. Thank you, Austin, for that beautiful picture. Um, oh, that's Mary. That's an angel. That's an angel. angel. That's the angel. And you guys remember these photos? Are you ready? And Mary, we love it. So. We're going to look into Luke 1 that actually talks about Mary and the angel. Let's go into it. Okay. The birth of Jesus foretold. The birth of Jesus. In the six months of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. Um, he will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? I am a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but now she's in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. What? Okay, did you hear like our word in there? Impossible. Nothing is impossible with God. So this story, we hear about it a lot at this time of the year because it's part of the story when Jesus' mom found out Jesus was coming. When God had promised throughout the whole Bible, it is now coming true. That's pretty cool. So what makes this story amazing is that an angel, a messenger from heaven, reminds Mary of something possible that God did in the past, that she would believe that something impossible would happen in her life too. Like what? Like she she wasn't married and she was having a baby. Like that's that does not happen. Well, thanks. <laughs> it was just, it was crazy. So Elizabeth was never supposed to be able to have a baby, but she was, she was amazing. Mary was not supposed to be pregnant with Jesus, but she was, what? There's so many, so many exciting things because God could do the impossible. I think that's our big idea. I think we gotta check out our big idea. Emma is the queen of big ideas. I just wanna let you know this. <laughs> Ready? What is it, Emma? Give it to us. Wait and see, God will do impossible things. Okay, can you say it with us? Wait and see. God will do impossible things. Awesome. Let's put that up on our board. We lost one of them. Um, last week we talked about wait and see. The Savior will change everything. And today we're talking about how God will do impossible things. Now, I don't know if I ever told you this, Emma. There was a pretty impossible thing that I got to see God do once. It was super, super cool. So. Back, like way back when, I think I was like 10 or 11, my cousin and I went to this Bible camp and she had really bad scoliosis. Like her, like, like her back, I don't know if you guys know what scoliosis is, but her spine was like an S. It wasn't great. And we were praying and we were asking God to heal people. And she was like, you know what? I feel like God's going to heal me. I'm like, what? We're 10. What is this? Um, just to let you guys know, God works at all ages. 
Like, if you want to pray for healing for someone, do it. Because the same Holy Spirit that we talk about in the Bible that adults talk about is still, is for you too. Like, you guys have the power of the Holy Spirit too, even when you're young. So we were praying, a bunch of us, we were like 10 and whatever, and we prayed for my cousin to do something impossible for her. And I literally felt her spine. Like, I had my hand on her back, and I felt her spine straighten. And she was able to do, like, cartwheels and backflips, and we were like, we always did, like, nothing because she wasn't able to. And it was crazy. Like, God did the impossible. That is crazy. Wow. And, like, he doesn't just do impossible things in the past. He does them now, which is really, really cool. So that's that's a story of something impossible that happened in my life. I saw it happen. Yeah. So I think um, let's talk about reflection a little bit. We're going to reflect on what we've been talking about today. So we talked a lot about the angels and the job they had telling Mary to wait and see. But, okay, question for you. What if you were Mary? How would you feel? I would be, I'd maybe be scared, I think. I'd, be, scared. I'd be really nervous. Yeah. Um, I might not even believe it. It seems so impossible. Honestly, how would you feel if God sent someone to you and told you that you would be doing something impossible? I'd be really excited. Yeah. But really nervous. Yeah. Probably like uh, me out of all people. Yeah. Um, would you, okay, would you feel nervous, overwhelmed, happy, all of the above? All of the above. All of the above. So Mary must have felt a lot of those things too, but she trusted God's promise. She waited to see God do impossible things through her. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I love it. I love that God did these impossible things back then and he's doing them now. So, um, let's talk about our memory verse. You guys, we love talking about memory verse. It's about the scripture in our heart. Do you remember where it comes from? Micah 7, 7. That's right. Okay. Um, do you got it? Oh, you got it right here. Yeah. Look at that. Okay. Okay. But as for me, I watch, I watch in hope, hope for, for the Lord. Lord. I, I wait, wait for, for God, God, my Savior. My God will, will hear me. me. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. We love it. We love to hear scripture. We love to learn more about it. Now, um, let's pray. We should pray to end our day before you guys get to go hang out with Carl. And then, yeah, we'll get going. Um, let's put our hands together because who are we focusing on? God. We're going to close our eyes because who are we focusing on? God. God. Let's do that. Dear God, we thank you so much for who you are. Thank you that you are doing impossible things, not just in the Bible, but even today, Lord. Help us see all the ways you are doing impossible things around us every day. Thank you that we are able to learn more about you and gather online. And will, you, will you bless each family, each child who's watching this in your holy mighty name? Amen. All right, my friends, we're going to go hang out with Carl. Bye. Bye. Hi there, little chicken nuggets. It's me, Carl. Welcome to Grow TV. <gasps> wow. Welcome to Grow TV! Hosted by Carl! Where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now once again, welcome to Grow TV! Hey y'all! I'm so glad y'all are here today. Today, I'm doing something very special, something extraordinary. Today, I will do the impossible. You see, there are many things in my life that people say straight to my face are impossible. To them, I say, who are you? And what are you doing in my house? So today, we'll be attempting five impossible tasks and prove all the naysayers wrong. Here we go. Number one impossible task, lick your elbow. Apparently, this is impossible, but let's see. Okay, it's a lot further than I imagined, so. <laughs> Did it. Number two impossible task, telepathy. You see, telepathy is the art of sending messages from one person's brain to the other without saying anything. So what I want you to do, kiddos, is think of an animal inside your brain. Think of one animal inside your brain, say it really loud inside there so I can I can I can hear it in my own brain all right all right let's give this a shot okay it's something hairy with a lot of teeth mmm whoever's thinking of a mushy banana please stop ah a Norwegian red tail armadillo boom got it you're welcome Tyler number three impossible task 
travel at the speed of light. They think I can't do this one? <laughs> Watch this. Did you see it? I went to Kansas and back. I'll do it again. I just ran from Baja, California. It's beautiful. Number four impossible task. Sneeze with my eyes open. Now this one's gonna be tough. Ready? <coughs> ha! Wow! I did it! Why does my head hurt? <laughs> Number five, time travel. Wait, I don't know how to time travel, but maybe my friend Sam does. Carl, how you doing, man? Great, Sam. Hey, I got a quick question. Shoot. Do you know how to time travel? Excuse me? Yeah, <laughs> time travel. You know, traveling through time. Um, I can't say that I do. Bummer. I don't either. Maybe it's impossible, but that's okay. Four out of five ain't bad, I guess. Not bad at all. Even though time travel will be super cool. Right? That's what I was thinking. I think I would travel back to when chocolate was first invented. Or when they made the first chicken nugget. <laughs> what a beautiful day that must have been. <sighs> beautiful day. What about you, Sam? What? If you could travel back in time at any moment, what would it be? When would it be? Good question. I think I'd like to go to some time in the Bible. I'd like to see something crazy cool. Like an angel. Yeah, seeing an angel would be pretty cool. It would. Believe it or not, an angel is actually a part of our story today. No way! Let's get started then. All right. So a long, long time ago, there were two people named Mary and Joseph, and they loved each other, and they were going to get married. Okay, so my man Joseph is going to marry Mary. Got it. But one night, an angel appeared to Mary, and it took Mary by surprise. I can imagine. Not every day when you get to meet an angel. You're right about that. So the angel told Mary not to be afraid because he was a messenger from God and that God was pleased with her. I bet that made her feel better. I bet so too. So what else did the angel tell her? Well, the angel said that she would be having a baby. <laughs> That's awesome. But why did that news need to be delivered by an angel? It's because this baby wouldn't just be a normal baby. This baby would be named Jesus and would be the son of God. Ah, she would be the mother of Jesus, the savior, the son of God. <laughs> Talk about impossible. Totally impossible. So she wasn't already having a baby, right? Nope. God performed a miracle so that she would be pregnant with a baby, and even more of a miracle that it would be the Son of God. <laughs> that is hard to believe, but I guess that's what makes it so great. God did the impossible. Yep. And God can do the same for you. What? No. <laughs> I don't think I want that, Sam. Please. Whoa. Calm down. What's wrong? Is God going to make me pregnant? <laughs> No, I mean, God can also do the same thing for us that might seem impossible for humans, but definitely not impossible for God. Oh yeah, of course. Okay, I totally changed my mind. If I could travel back in time, I would want to go back to that moment. Talk to Mary and Joseph. Get all excited with them that God was going to do amazing things through them. Yup. And now that you know the whole story, you can tell them, wait and see, God will do impossible things. <laughs> Yo, that's, that's Sam. Sam, <laughs> hold up. You just said her big idea. Today's big idea is wait and see. God will do impossible things. So let's say it out loud on the count of three. One, two, three. Wait, wait and, and see. see. God, God will do impossible will do things. Impossible yeah. Things. yeah. <laughs> God will do impossible things. He's already done one. He's giving me a brain. Hey, Sam. Yeah? Want to try something impossible? Always. All right. We got to say the whole alphabet in less than one second. Ready? That does sound impossible, but I'm game. Go! But no. <laughs> I think we did. We just did the impossible. Ha-ha! <laughs> Woohoo! See you next week, kiddos. Thank you for watching and tune in next week for a new episode of Pro TV.